We made this. Hello and welcome to Frame to Frame, part of the We Made This podcast network. We are the podcast that take two seemingly unconnected films and slam them together. And this week we're doing it with body swap movies. I'm Andy Williams. And I'm Sean Wilson. And this week, as I mentioned, we're looking at body swap movies. So in light of losing the late Matthew Perry, we wanted to go back and watch one of his movies. So we we had a brief discussion as to which one we'd choose. And we we plumped for 17 again. So we're going to be looking at at 17 again, which stars Zac Efron and Matthew Perry as ostensibly the same character. We will also, because what else can you look at as a body swap movie other than the, the John Woo 1997 film Face Off. So, Sean, 17 again and Face Off. What's your relationship to the two movies? Well, can I just say, first off, you jumped straight to John Woo there rather than Freaky Friday, but I'm not, I'm not quibbling because I agreed <laughs> I agreed on Face Off. So, <laughs> Eventually. Um, yeah, you could hear the generational gap opening there. It's like, oh, he's going to say Freaky Friday. It's just Face Off. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, but yeah, so um, 17 again. Honestly, it's one of those movies where I genuinely couldn't remember if I'd seen it before, and that doesn't happen very often. And... Yeah, out out of respect for Matthew Perry, because Matthew Perry, me and you are both of the same generation. We're both of the friend Mm. generation. Matthew Perry, we can't we can't cover friends on this podcast. That's not what we do, um, because there's ten seasons of the whole thing. Um, But we don't do TV either. So well, there's that. But um, I think that the the performance that he made in in Friends as Chandler goes down as one of the great TV comic performances. Because, frankly, I think there's a lot of Chandler in Matthew, and I think there's a lot of Matthew in Chandler. Um, yes. So it's it's it was a great performance and a, an unfortunate loss. I've never actually seen Seventeen again before. It came out when I was in university, so I am I'm going to be jumping into this one for the first time for the pod. I can just imagine you turning your nose up at it. <laughs> when, when, when it came out <laughs> I can really picture that so, I mean I kind um, of did that with all Zac Efron movies until <laughs> me and Orson Welles heck I, 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 I kind of do that now but <laughs> so, but no Matthew Perry defined a style of comedy that I think was hugely influential for our generation was, I mean after Matthew Perry played Chandler you couldn't deliver a sarcastic punchline in any other manner other than Chandler um, mm. it, it was like, so singular. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? Yes, go on. You know, um, th- I mean, there's just so many quotes that you could pull out. Um, yes. In the even improv, the the final line of the series, uh, mm. let's go for a cup of coffee. Great. Where? Yeah. <laughs> like the fact that he yeah. that he was given that as, as the ultimate respect from the, the creators of the series as well. Um, yeah, he's he's a very sad, tragic and unfortunate loss, especially for somebody who, you know, I've, I I got his book, the the recent autobiography that he put out and it seemed like he was going onto the, the right path. It seemed like he was, he was really um, beginning to find his way and for, for a life to now be cut short in this way is, is it's tragic. Yeah. It seems to happen with a lot, with a lot of creatives just when they're coming into their prime um that's when we lose them but you mm-hmm. know they they always leave behind an extraordinary legacy and in matthew perry's case a remarkable comic legacy because yeah. say what you will about friends the, the comic chemistry between the main players was absolutely extraordinary um mm. oh, right the you know, very end. neither of us are gonna defend all aspect of friends like there's bits that are, are very very dated yeah um, there's also a lot of it that still really really works well, you, you believe in the characters, even though they are comic archetypes. You believe in Matthew Perry's channel. You believe you, you recognize yeah. elements of that character. It's like, you know, I see elements of him in you sometimes. <laughs> and I mean that That's as a very kind of you to say. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I was, um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say this, but I was watching Friends uh, recently before um, the, the sad news. And my daughter uh, saw the screen. And as soon as Ross appeared, she said, he looks like you. <laughs> and your daughter is right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm with your daughter. Oh, oh, I'm not going to be able to see that now. That's like, yeah. um, that's like a Mandela effect of the eyes. <laughs> it's, it's not the first time it's been said to me. 
um, <laughs> to the extent that when um, when I was working in the uh, a shop in the student union, and I was also pictured in the newspaper because I'd just interviewed Michael Sheen. And uh, one of the security guards uh, printed out a photo of Ross Geller and taped it over my face. <laughs> so, it's a very, um, very committed security guard. <laughs> it was, but it was, I mean, I appreciate the, the commitment to the joke. But, yeah. um, you know, moving, moving back to 17 again, obviously you couldn't remember it. I'd never seen it before. Face off, where do you stand with face off? Oh, where don't I stand with Face Off? Uh, it's a you know, generation-defining movie. Oh, this is one of those first 18-rated action movies that I remember getting into when I was probably about 11, 12, because it came out in 97. I mean, you kind Dolph- of can as well, can't you? There's not a huge amount wrong with it other than, you know, blood and violence. Well, that's that's what well, we know. We're not going to get all Protestant on you because, oh no, there's violence in it. You're not allowed to watch it. Um, but you know, it's it's one of those ones. I think I started. I obviously I didn't see it in the cinema because I was too young. But I do remember it coming through on TV, and I I must have caught up with it around the same time that I caught up with the likes of Die Hard, and th- there was a wave of these obviously intentionally ridiculous high concept action movies that I think our generation, we caught the backwash of it towards the end of the nineties. You know, mm. Many of them led by Nicolas Cage. Well, there's the Holy Trinity of Nicolas Cage movies, isn't there? Which, which is the rock Con Air, and face off. Yes, there is. That's right. I was, I was worried you were going to say something else like city of angels, the family man and <laughs> something else. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, no, that's not it. So, but yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I watched it when I was younger. It was similar to to you in that I was watching it um, when I was probably a bit too young for it. But I can't even think about returning to it without going back to Spy, which we covered um, recently. (laughs) Because Jason Statham's just going to pop in the face-off machine. Get myself on you, face. I know there's a fucking face-off machine. (laughs) (laughs) You're just keeping it a secret from me. (laughs) Yeah. It's um, brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to jumping back to, to face off for it, just to see see how it's aged as much as anything else. Yes, we'll see how how that goes. Uh, the episode itself will be with you on the 15th of November, so you'll be able to listen to the full episode um, when it comes out then. But until that point, where we are discussing body swap movies with Seventeen Again and Face Off, I'm Andy Williams, and I'm Sean Wilson. And please continue on listening to hear another great show from the We Made This Podcast Network. Bye-bye. Art changes over time. This might feel weird to say because the art itself doesn't physically change, but if we agree that art tells us something about the world around us, what happens to that art once the world has changed? This is the question we try to answer on Movieversaries, a film podcast on the We Made This Network. I'm the host, Bo Nicholson, and in each episode, my guests and I celebrate and reevaluate films on significant anniversaries. We examine films from all over the world through a critical lens to determine if they stand the test of time by exploring their themes, performances, and techniques. This year, our focus is on movies made in years ending in three. So far, we've covered the avant-garde classic Meshes of the Afternoon from 1943. On the other end of the spectrum, how does the technical marvel Jurassic Park hold up 30 years later? We also delve into other iconic films of their time, such as King Kong from 1933, Eight and a Half from 1963, and Return of the Jedi from 1983. From European art house to action, comedy, and horror, If a film is celebrating a significant anniversary, we're discussing it. Don't miss out. Subscribe to Movieversaries now, wherever you get your podcasts.